παρουσιάστε.
Excellencies, His Excellency the President of the Republic of Cyprus, Mr. Nikos Anastasiadis, entering now the hall. Ceremony for the presentation of credentials of non resident ambassadors to the Republic of Cyprus. Her Excellency, Ms. Jacqueline Lumbumba Yonga, High Commissioner of Kenya. Your Excellency, Ms. Mietani Shoker, Ambassador of Zimbabwe.
Her Excellency, Ms. Demidou Hambisa Mbonsa, Ambassador of Ethiopia. His Excellency the High Commissioner of Nigeria, Mr. Nak Koro. His Excellency, the High Commissioner of Malaysia, <coughs> Mr. Azri Mat Yaakov. The Ambassador of the Dominican Republic, His Excellency Mr. Ernesto Torres Pereira.
Excellency the Ambassador of Iraq, Mr. Mariette Saleh. Excellency the Ambassador of Pakistan, Mr. Salman Abba. His Excellency the High Commissioner of Rwanda, Mr. James Kader. His Excellency the Ambassador of Armenia, Mr. Ikran Magatsyan. I'm afraid I'm going to be here. 
Her Excellency, the Ambassador of Mongolia, Ms. Sayana Lakaruzu. His Excellency the Ambassador of Vietnam, Mr. Duong Hai Hung. Last but not least, <laughs> Her Excellency the Ambassador of North Macedonia, Ms. Lidija Poshko. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it is indeed with great pleasure 
and distinct honor that I welcome you all at the Presidential Palace today, having just received the letters of credence appointing you as the new ambassadors and high commissioners of your countries to the Republic of Cyprus. At the outset, kindly be assured that my government and I personally will provide you with every assistance and support deemed necessary in the fulfillment of your high duties. Our foreign policy focused in the advancement of effective multilateralism and addressing jointly with your countries the complex challenges emanating from a fluid and yet dynamic international environment. In this respect, our common uh, tra trajectory aspires to serve as a driver of peace and security in our region and beyond. Excellencies, the presentation of your credentials today is taking place in the midst of the tragic events following the Russian invasion in Ukraine, which undermines international peace and security. Cyprus remains steadfastly committed to defending the principles of international law, democracy, and human rights, and utterly contend uh, from the outset the Russian attacks, underlining our firm support to the sovereignty independence and territorial integrity of Ukraine. It is our firm belief that democracy and diplomacy must always be defended, protected, and is the only way forward to ensure that dialogue prevails so as to achieve an immediate ceasefire. At the same time, the dramatic developments in Ukraine and their domino effect have proven now more than ever that energy security can only be ensured through synergies and joint actions. This also includes the strengthening of EU's diversification of energy sources, including interconnections that are so important for Cyprus and not and more, especially in the current frame fragmented geopolitical context. Building strong international cooperation on energy markets and projects with reliable partners remains key. Within this framework, the Eastern Mediterranean region, with its uh, abundance of energy resources, both in terms of hydrocarbons and renewables, can play a decisive role in addressing the current crisis by providing an alternative corridor of energy to Europe. Cyprus, due to its key geoposition, as well as its excellent relations and long-standing synergies in the field of energy with neighboring countries, stands ready to be part of much-needed energy solutions. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, earlier, I stressed the importance of strengthening multilateralism and establishing forms of effective cooperation that promote international peace and security, especially nowadays, that the ongoing conflict in Ukraine is changing the geopolitical environment. As history has proven time and time again, there are always certain state actors and revisionist powers that constantly undermine global peace and stability as well as our joint efforts to uphold international law. As in the case of Ukraine, our country also struggles for almost five decades with illegal occupation following the 1974 invasion by Turkey, which forced thousands of Cypriots to flee their homes. Witnessing the tragedy in Ukraine our people recall the open wounds and scars of war and forcible displacement, the pain of still missing uh, loved ones, and the continued cessation attempts in contravention to international law. However, even in the, in the face of, adversi of adversity, it is important to look to the future and work for creating conditions for the resumption of negotiation to resolve 
the, to resolve the Cyprus issue on the basis of a bicommunal, bizonal federation as set out in the relevant UN Security Council resolutions. Support to this effort will be crucial. To this end, bearing in mind the current impasse, I undertook the initiative to submit a package proposal of game-changing confidence-building measures aimed to enhancing the existing cooperation between the two communities and overcome mistrust, contributing also to creating favorable conditions for a dialogue to take place in good faith. Please allow me to highlight that uh, my proposed confidence-building measures touches upon issues pertaining the fence city of Varosha, the operation of the illegal airport of Timbu, or Erjan as they call it, and the Famagusta port, which is under now, uh, the, under the control of the Turkish troops now, uh, whilst at the same time lifting of the Turkish embargo vis-a-vis -vis Cyprus and the exploitation of hydrocarbons. On the latter, my proposal also includes an invitation to Turkey to negotiate and conclude an agreement for the delimitation of the exclusive economic zone continental shelf between the Republic of Cyprus and Turkey, in accordance always with international law as reflected in the United Nations Conventions on the Law of the Sea. At the same time, it is also my strong belief that we should negotiate, we should negotiate within what is feasible and realistic and not what is desirable but impossible to achieve. And I'm talking, of course, about new ideas presented, such as the two-state solution or the sovereign equality, which do not only deviate from the UN parameters and the mandate of the Secretary General, but also fall to the latter category of aspiring to achieve the impossible. What I want to confirm to you, Our Excellency, to your Excellency, is my unwavering determination to achieve a settlement that will address the legitimate concerns and aspirations of both communities in Cyprus, for all Cypriots, without any external interference and anachronistic security arrangements, such as foreign guarantees and presence of foreign troops. This is my vision, a vision that stems from the realization that only through mutual compromises we can reach to a solution that will allow all Cypriots, Turkish and Greek, to live in a modern European and independent state. It goes without saying that it remains extremely important for Turkey and the Turkish Cypriot side to show a similar degree of commitment and to stop undermining any efforts towards resuming the bi-communal talks, either through illegal plans and actions in defense area of Varosha and our exclusive economic zones, or by advocating non-functional solutions. And taking this opportunity, I wish to express our sincere appreciation for your country's support during these extremely challenging times, as well as to your principal stance on our efforts to reach a viable and lasting settlement of the Cyprus problem, always within the framework of the decisions and the resolutions of the UN Security Council, international law, and the EU principles and values. Excellencies. High Commissioner Athar, since the establishment of our diplomatic ties in 1961, the relations between Cyprus and Pakistan which uh, are based on mutual respect, have been growing steadily, especially in the framework of our Commonwealth family. Pakistan has a key role to play at an international level, in particular as an influential regional player, contributing to wider efforts for achieving regional cooperation, peace, and stability. 
Cyprus and Mongolia share a cordial friendship anchored on respect for the purpose and principles of the UN Charter, identifying the great potential that exists despite geographical distance between our two countries, I want to assure you, Ambassador Langavasuren, of our readiness to deepen our cooperation in specific areas of mutual interest for the benefit of our countries and peoples. High Commissioner Jakob, we are keen to further advance our bilateral relations with Malaysia and conclude pending agreements and memoranda. This will assist in solidifying and institutionalizing our relations to our mutual benefit. Malaysia, with its cultural, ethnic, and religious diversity, constitutes an important partner to the EU on the global state. stage. Cyprus, as a member state of the EU, considers Ethiopia as a natural partner of Europe, our geographical proximity and our political and historical interaction interlink our two continents. A prosperous, peaceful, and resilient Ethiopia, Ambassador Bonsna remains an essentially EU foreign policy objective. Ambassador Macrician, this year marks the 30th anniversary, anniversary since the establishment of diplomatic relations between Cyprus and Armenia, a celebration which serves as a reminder of the historic bonds between our peoples and countries, stemming from our common heritage and shared history. I'm very pleased to note that in the course of these 30 years, our countries worked meticulously to set a vast institutional framework upon which we can now work together to further expand our existing cooperation in the years ahead. I would also be amiss not to refer to the Cypriot Armenians, their dynamic contribution to the Cypriot society and their essential role in maintaining the fraternal bonds between our two countries ablaze. Although our bilateral relations with the Republic of North Macedonia were institutionalized very recently, they are undeniably gathering momentum. I strongly believe that we share the same view, Ambassador uh, Boskovska, concerning the significant underlined, underlying prospects for developing a strong and uh, broad cooperation mutually beneficial for our countries. I also seize the opportunity, uh, this opportunity, to reiterate Cyprus' support to your country's efforts for EU accession. In this regard, we look forward to the swift opening of the accession negotiations. Ambassador Tsoke, I am convinced that the excellent relations between uh, Cyprus and Zimbabwe based on the solid foundation of common principles, will be further developed in the years ahead. And in this context, we look forward to expanding our cooperation, both in the bilateral field and in international settings, in particularly within the United Nations. Excellencies, we attach great importance on the reinforcement of our relations with Iraq, we support a swift government formation that will address the needs of the Iraqi people and we look forward to working with the new government, once formed, to strengthen our strategic partnership on our many shared interests. A stable and prosperous Iraq, Ambassador Saleh, is something that the Iraqi people need, but also the region as a whole. Cyprus and Kenya, High Commissioner Gyonka, enjoy a long and fruitful friendship originated decades ago during the anti-colonial struggle and the common search of, uh, for freedom and national self-determination. The strong personal friendship 
of, your, of our first leaders, Archbishop Makarios and President Yomo Kenyatta, pioneers in the Setchas Coast, reflects that our bond is strong and based on deep roots. The similarities, on the other hand, between Cyprus and the Dominican Republic, uh, Ambassador Pereira, are obvious. I am pleased to observe that our work in the United Nations has an excellent record, record of cooperation, exchanging best practices in ecotourism, cruises, and education can also be of mutual benefit. Cyprus, within the, Europe, uh, the European Union, fully supports the Dominican Republic's efforts for sustainable development and addressing climate change challenges. High Commissioner Colo, the once vibrant Cypriot expatriate community in Lagos is the bond which interlinks Cyprus and Nigeria. Rest assured of our eagerness to broaden our cooperation, both in the bilateral and multilateral context, particularly through the Commonwealth, uh, where we have been participating since the independence of our two countries back in the 1960s. Cyprus and Vietnam enjoy friendly ties, which are based on strong bonds of friendship. Since the establishment of our diplomatic relations in 1980, our cooperation has been rapidly developing. Evident of our excellent relations, Ambassador Hank, is the large Vietnamese community residing in Cyprus, which contributes to the enrichment of our society's cultural fabric or of and the development of the mutual understanding between the people of our two countries. High Commissioner Gatera, Rwanda's pivotal role in Africa emerged through your country's uh, uh, hard work and struggle to transcend the bitter tragedies of the past and work for national reconciliation and progress. We look forward to build upon the existing friendly ties between Cyprus and Rwanda in the years to come. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, in closing, I would like to once more personally assure you of our support to your mission, as well as our readiness to work closely with you towards the further development of our relations in the years ahead. Thank you very much. Once again, congratulations for your appointment, and I wish you the best. Thank you.